Back in the middle of last year, I turned my motorised roller garage door into a smart garage door using ESP Home and Home Assistant. Now that was quite a DIY electronics project really, very easy to make but certainly not something for your average smart home enthusiast. In that video I mentioned the Miros Smart Wi-Fi garage door opener as a great off-the-shelf alternative. Well Miros have sent me the top-end version, the MSG200, to have a play with and see how it compares. The basic concept behind making a motorised garage door smart requires two things. Firstly, you need some way to know whether the door is open or closed. In my homemade solution, I used a regular wireless Zigbee contact sensor. Then you need some way to close a circuit, so a remote controlled switch or relay that connects into your existing garage door controller's push button terminals. In my homemade version, I used an ESP microcontroller with a relay attached to it and loaded a bit of code onto the ESP module that let me control that relay over Wi Fi from Home Assistant. I then combined those two components, the door contact sensor and the relay, into one virtual garage door device in Home Assistant. The solution still works to this day and has been extremely reliable and if you want to take a look at that project then I'll stick a link in the description. But I do totally understand that this project isn't for everyone. Most of you out there just want to buy something, plug it in and start using it. And that's where the Miros products come in. Miros sell two models of the garage door opener. There's the MSG100 which I briefly mentioned in the last garage door video. It's really compact, small enough to fit inside the empty space of a lot of garage door controllers in fact. It supports a single garage door which could be a roller door like I have or an up and over or segmented style one. It takes its power from a USB socket, has a wired contact sensor and it connects to Wi-Fi. Then there's the MSG200 which supports up to three garage doors although you only get cables for two doors included in the box. The main unit itself is bigger than the single door version but it does have an external aerial for improved Wi-Fi range. That aerial is actually quite important I think because the range on the single door version wasn't that great and did suffer from the occasional dropout in my experience. So that's why I'm reviewing the top end version with that external aerial and I'd actually recommend this version over the smaller one for that reason even if you only have to control one garage door. Both openers support Apple HomeKit too, which makes using them in Apple Home and Home Assistant really easy. Even if you don't use those or you're on Android, you can still use the Miros app and connect it to things like Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant. But before I set this up, let's see what you get in the box. Right, so let's start by having a look inside the box. If I just open this up, we have got lots of little boxes inside it. I've got a user manual. Uh, in multiple languages and this box here I think is the actual garage door opener itself. Yep, here we go. Let's open this little bag up. There we go. It's not too big at all. It's got a uh, home kit pairing code on the uh, front. We've got a little box with cables in. I've got a feeling most of the rest of these boxes are going to be full of cables. Oh yeah, this one is a micro USB cable. Ooh. A fake iPhone charger. Okay, next box. Let's move that out of the way a second. Give me a bit more space in this one. We have, okay, this must be one of the cables uh, that senses the door. And in here, we've got a plastic bag with some cable ties, uh, sticky pads, and another magnetic reed sensor, I think, the other side that goes against that. Last box, the biggest box of the lot. And looking through the little hole there, I'm pretty sure it's more cables. So let's have a, a look in here. Yep, more cables. So exactly the same as the previous one, but much longer. If you've got two garage doors, then this cable is for the closest one, and then this one's for the furthest away. Uh, again, you've got both sides of a reed sensor there more cable ties, more sticky pads. 
Let's take a closer look at the back of the garage door opener itself. So you've got these four ports here. So the first one here is a um, micro USB, that's for power. And then you've got these three more unusual um, ports here. They're sort of four little square holes each. Uh, there's a little reset button there. So this has got three ports numbered one to three. Now this is where you connect in uh, your garage door wires. So let me show you on here. This is the shortest cable and you should be able to see you've got two ends really. You've got that square connector just here. And you've got these two little bare wires just here. Now this square connector goes into the back of the garage door opener just like that. So that connects pretty easy. Uh, and these bare wires here will actually go into your existing garage door controller. Uh, and obviously that will go on your door itself so as it knows whether it's open or closed. Before I go and physically install it in the garage, I'm gonna pair it to the Miros app. Uh, I'm gonna do that first because it's a lot easier to mess around while I'm at my desk here than it will be once it's physically attached to the wall in the garage. So on the front of the device, there's a little um, QR code for HomeKit pairing. I suggest you take a photo of that just in case the sticker gets damaged and you need to use it in the future. So let's start by plugging this in and powering it on. And there's a little LED, oh, dropped it. There's a little LED flashing uh, green and orange on the front. So that is a good sign. Okay, I'm gonna get the app open. So this is the official Miros app on an iPhone. Gonna tap plus. Gonna choose smart garage door opener, MSG 200. I'm only gonna set this up for a single garage door today. Well, today, I've only got one garage door. Uh, next, I'm going to start because I know that this is going to work. Uh, now I have got a Sumphy and a S, and I have got a Relixo RTS. Choose. Okay, well, I've already powered it up. Next, yes, it's all flashing. Next, I've got the HomeKit version and I'm gonna look for the little code on the front. It's gonna ask for a photo. There we go. Add to home. This will take a few minutes. Okay, that's finished. So now I'm going to say it's in the garage. Continue. So that's the bridge itself, and then there's gonna be all the individual devices. So here we go. So garage door one, continue, is in the garage. It's going to be called Garage Door 1 for the moment. And no automations, thank you. Now, because it supports three devices, it's going to add the other two garage doors as well, which is a bit of a pain, but we can always delete those afterwards. So let's go through the motion of adding in the other garage doors too. And no automations. Garage Door 3, put that in the garage. And we're done. Now it's going to go through a whole load of instructions on how to actually do the installation. Uh, I'm going to skip that for the moment because I've already read it. And you can then uh, pair it with Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant. I'm going to skip that again right now. And there you can see three garage doors available in the app. Now one more thing I do want to talk about is the uh, device says it needs 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Now, I've got 2.4 and 5 gigahertz running on the same SSID. That isn't a problem for me. Um, it just You just saw it, it just picked it up and it worked fine. Uh, whereas the oil diffuser that I had, I had to set up a special 2.4 gigahertz only um, like guest network so as I could connect it. Um, this device doesn't have that same problem, but if you do have an issue pairing it, uh, go into your router settings, temporarily disable the five gigahertz network and see if it'll pair then. Onto the physical installation then. And the most difficult part of this whole process is working out where to connect it into your existing controller. So you're gonna need to power it off and open it up in order to take a look. Now, if you've got the user manual to hand for it, then it might help, but you're basically looking for two terminals that are intended for a push button. They might be labeled for a push button or there might be other markings. 
The installation manual for the door opener has some suggestions of what to check for. Miros also have a compatibility list up on their website that you can go and check, but it doesn't tell you exactly where the connections are. So I really suggest you get hold of the user manual for your garage door controller and make sure you locate those connection points. Anyway, let's go to the garage and wire it up. So this here is my Sumphy Relixo garage door controller. And the very first thing I've got to do is power it off so as it's nice and safe. So let's unplug the cable. And you can see this little black wire coming out of the bottom here. This goes into this little white box here and that's my homemade garage door opener, uh, which we won't be needing anymore. So the plan is I've got to open this up and connect this actual new wire into there instead. So uh, let's crack on with that. There's just one screw involved here for uh, this controller. And I just pop the cover off. And then we want to connect into these two connections here, which say key slash switch on mine. Uh, they're numbered 10 and 11. I'm just going to disconnect these two old wires here. These don't actually matter which way round they go as far as I'm aware. Um, it's just a switch. So I'll just connect them two in and then I want to pop the cover back on. Snaps into place. Now this is a little bit annoying because the cable that comes from those connectors to the little square connector that's got to go into the actual opener itself. It's not very long. You've got maybe eight inches there. So you've got to have the opener very close to your controller. I'm going to stick it on the wall here, I think, um, using some sticky pads. It's USB powered, of course, so I'm going to get that USB cable in. Luckily, my old homemade version was also USB powered, so I've already got a USB plug up there ready to go. And then the little square plug goes into port number one on the controller. And the final job is to connect the contact sensor on the door. I'm going to move the camera now to show you that bit because it's down there. Now this is the trickiest part to film because I'm lying on my garage floor uh, with a camera right next to me and I don't want to knock the tripod. Um, but what we've got is a lot of cable. There is quite a lot of cable here, um, which should work for most garage doors I'd have thought. Uh, but if you need more cable, then there is a longer one in the box, if you've only got one garage door that is. Um, so we've got two parts of a sensor. I've got to fit one part on that side so it's sort of static and then this other part will go on the garage door itself uh, that's going to be a little bit tricky because mine is curved so i think i'm going to have to build up a layer of um, foam pads to give it uh, sort of the depth to be able to stick on properly uh, so let's get the fixed side on first that should be straightforward i'm going to fit it just there, oh no, let's go there, just there, so as it's right alongside this segment of my garage door. Okay, loads of cable, so I'm going to have to tidy all that up when I've finished. Okay, I'll be back in a second, I need more sticky pads. Okay, I'm back and I have extra sticky pads. Hopefully you can see that. There's like a whole uh, brick layer of sticky pads on top of that to give it some sort of depth when it goes on the garage door. So let's stick this on. Uh, apparently it has to be within about an inch of the other sensor, so I need to be reasonably close to it. So I'm going to put it about there. If this works, I'll use the actual screws supplied to hold it in place permanently. But for now, I just want to get it working with sticky pads. Okay, I think everything's ready to go and I just need to plug it back in. Nothing exploded, so that's a good sign. And then we will use the official Miros app to try and open the door. So here goes. It's working. Okay, it's open and let's close it.
Okay, that worked, but I've got a notice that says garage door closing failed. If your garage door has closed, it may be because the opening time is set incorrectly. Should you head over and set it now? Yes, I think I will. So basically, because it takes a long time for the garage door to close, I have to say how long it takes. So I think it takes 30 seconds. I'll actually time that and set it up properly for future use, I think. There we go, that's all finished then. It really did take about 15 minutes to install, so not long at all. I've tidied the cables up a bit, bundled them up there, and the cable that runs all the way down the wall to the door sensor, I've clipped it to the wall a little bit just to uh, make it a little bit neater. Okay, so now that you have it working, you probably want to look at some of the more advanced smart features, like voice control. If you're using Apple Home, then by default you'll get Siri control. You can add it to Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant too if you want, but here's a bit of a security warning. Alexa, open the garage door. Yeah, voice control for doors and locks is risky, but you can set up a pin in the Miros app for Apple Home or Google. Or if you're using services like Alexa, then please do edit the device in that app and set a pin. I did say that this would work in Home Assistant too, and that's done by connecting it as a HomeKit device. So make sure you've already run through the setup process, connecting it to the Miros app. If you are using an iOS device, then you must remove it from Apple Home first. You can leave it in the Miros app though. Once you've done that, it'll hopefully just appear as a detected HomeKit device in Home Assistant, and you can configure it as usual. It'll appear as a cover entity for you to control. Is there anything wrong with this gadget then? Well, if I have to pick a fault, then it would have been nice to have had some little keyhole screw mounts on the back of it, so as it could be easily wall mounted. The instructions suggest you use the sticky pads to mount it somewhere, but a couple of small keyholes in the back would have allowed for a much neater installation for me. If you are interested in getting one of these, then I will put an affiliate link in the description. Please use that and you'll be helping to support the channel. These people here are my channel members and I want to say a big thank you to all of them. If you'd like to become a channel member too and get early access to my videos, then please click the join button under this video for more information. Please give the video a like if you found it useful and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for free to see more from me. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.